Thanks so much for joining this breakfast. I really admire what CBI is doing, which is why I'm here. And I admire your effort to try to build a sense of community at a time when this coronavirus makes it so difficult. Uh, and people are always, I think, a little surprised that a New York Times columnist should be interested in issues of grassroots community building. And let me tell you how that came about. So I grew up in a rural area in Oregon, in a small town called Yamhill, that was very proud of its social fabric and of its upward mobility. It had done very well. A uh, working class area, but union jobs repel people upward. And then in the 1990s, those jobs went away and uh, meth came in. And a quarter of the kids on my old school bus are now dead from uh, drugs, alcohol, and suicide, what are called deaths of despair. And uh, to help those kids on my bus, we needed better policies. We needed uh, better efforts at the federal, state, and grassroots level to support them. You know, the kids who got on the bus right after me, it was a nap family, the five nap kids. Um, all five of the nap kids, four boys and one girl, are now gone from um, basically drugs and alcohol. We as a society spent an enormous amount of time incarcerating my friends the naps. We, if that same money had been spent educating them, supporting them with social services, providing drug treatment, building a sense of community, then they would be alive, their kids and grandkids would be in better shape. And yet we didn't, we didn't do that. And that's why I believe in community institutions. Um, we need better policies, but to get there, we often need a better, a better, uh, a better sense of community institutions. You know, in many ways, this year has been a particularly difficult year for all of these long-term inequities and injustices in the U.S. Uh, uh, aside from. Uh, the central economic inequity that the top 1% uh, has more wealth than the bottom 90%. We now have a situation in which um, the, uh, the, the wealthiest Americans have been able to magnify uh, that wealth. Uh, and those at the bottom have been risking their lives and dying at hugely unequal shares. And so... I mentioned the need for better policies, but you know, I think that also what we need is better narratives. And that also is, I think, what happens at a community level. In America, over the last 50 years, we've become absorbed with the idea that it's all about personal responsibility. Personal responsibility is real, and I don't want to take away their sense of agency. But if we're going to have that conversation, let's also have a conversation about our collective social responsibility. Um, when you can make a projection about where a kid will end up based on the zip code that they are born in, you know, when children in three U.S. counties uh, are born with a lower life expectancy than children born in Bangladesh or Cambodia, that's not because those infants are making bad choices. It's because we as a country are making bad choices. And so, sure, Let's have a conversation about personal responsibility, bad, bad, bad choice. Let's also, though, look in the mirror as a community, as a country, and look at the need to provide more opportunity. And, you know, I'm, I'm optimistic. Uh, I do think that we have the policies. We have the, pol we have the tools to address our problems. We have uh, the resources to address them. What we've lacked is the political will. This year, maybe the, the, the suffering in the U.S. from the pandemic, uh, the toxicity of the political campaign has underscored to all of us uh, how important it is that we do move forward, that we provide new and better narratives, that we provide greater opportunity for all Americans. And every election year is a chance to start again. Uh, so I just want to salute you all for your efforts to build community in Charlotte, to change narratives, provide more opportunity, and help make this a better community and country. Thanks so much.